Good day, sir, Kent Oba, and classmate. For today's discussion, the team will tackle about the lake and riverine fisheries. What is lake? Lake is a very slow-flowing body of open water which occupies a land depression. This group of water bodies include ponds and impoundments. Lakes are also part of a larger ecosystem that extends beyond the lake itself to the land that surrounds and drains water into the lake. Environmental characteristics of what? Of, of lake. Temperature, light, and wind are three of the main factors of effect the physical characteristic of a lake. Temperature, and a light vary from lake to lake. Deep plant growth dissolve materials time of day. Seasons and latitude can all affect light ability to pass through the lake's water. What is river? A river is a naturally flowing water course, usually fresh water flowing towards an ocean, sea, lake, and another river. In some cases, a river flows in the ground and becomes dry at the end of course without reaching another body of water. Environmental characteristic of river. Vital characteristic of river ecosystem are temperature, oxygen, concentration, pH, hydrodynamic processes, flow of floods, morphodynamic processes, sediment plus transport formation of riverbed features, and habitat and structure by Kirk and at it alto 2002. Riverine fisheries. The riverine fisheries are a part of inland fisheries, where the fishes are captured directly from the different river system, with the help of scientifically made fish, crabs, and gears. As the result of my research, the riverine fisheries resort in India is immense as large number of productive riverine system is present in this country. Because of because of their five river system, namely Ganges, the Brahmaputra, the Indus, the peninsula is and the west coast. Psychochemical profile. Example. Profile of psychochemical parameters from Lake Kadagno on September 12, around 1 p.m. and 9 p.m. 2017. Measurements were taken from the platform. The city probe was equivalented from 5 minutes at 0 0.5 deep before measuring temperature. Formazine turbidity unit. Conductivity dissolved oxygen. Physical properties. Lakes are not uniform mass of water. In fact, they are extremely non-uniform and complex system. The actual physical properties of a lake such as is a deep, shape, and water temperature. Add to this complexity through factors such as sedimentation and water circulation. Chemical properties. When looking at a lake, you may think that not much is going underneath the water surface. In fact, a lot is actually happening involving the lake chemistry including oxygen, nutrient distribution, which can greatly influence the lake health. Topography of Lake Lanao The lake was formed by the, the tectonic volcanic damming of Basin between two mountain ranges and the collapse of large volcano. It has a maximum depth of 122 meters or 400 feet and a mean depth of 60.3 meters and or 128 feet. The basin is shallowest toward the north and gets progressively deeper towards the south. Let's discuss about the dynamic of the lakes and rivers. So let's first discuss the dynamics of the lakes. There are different dynamics of lakes in the Philippines. So first is the largest lake among all lakes in the Philippines. It is the Laguna de Bay. It is located in Metro Manila. It has an area of 949 square kilometers and a depth of 2.8 meters. It has a W-shaped and it has three lobes, two peninsulas jut out from the north, the middle lobe between peninsulas, and has a volcanic feature Laguna Caldera and Island Talim in the middle of the lake. It has 21 tributaries. The Pasig River is its major outflow and it is this major source of freshwater fish in the Philippines. Next is the second largest or biggest lake in the Philippines, the Lake of Lanao or Lanao Lake. It has an area of 340 square kilometers, the depth of 122 meters. It is located in Mindanao within the Lanao del, uh, del Sur province. It is also the largest lake in the Mindanao. It is formed by volcanic and tectonic activity and it is one of the oldest surviving lakes in the Philippines. It has four rivers in the lake and Agos River, it is only outflow. So it has a hydroelectric plant located along the Lanao Agos River system that supplies 70% of the island's electricity. Next is the third largest lake in the Philippines. It is the Taal Lake or 
it is found on Luzon, the province of Batangas. It has an area of 234.2 square kilometers. Its lakes water fill a large caldera formed by volcanic eruptions that occurred years ago. And it has a big amount of sulfuric content due to its location in the volcanic region. Next is the rivers dynamic. So I chose the three longest rivers in the Philippines. So first is the Cagayan River, or known as the Rio Grande de Cagayan. It flows from the Caraballo Mountains, covering 314 miles to the Babuyan Channel, into the Philippine Sea, with, with the water flowing from south to north. This is a river that experienced severe flooding due to the high rainfall up to a 300 millimeters annually and surface retention that causes water to move slowly. The valleys along the river are very fertile. There are two dams which have been built on two of its tributaries. The river has a wide variety of fish including a rare riverine fish locally known as Lodong or Cistrius pelacatilis. The next longest river is the Mindanao River. It has 232 miles. There are four major tributaries. These are the Ala River, Baluan River, Pulangi River, and Imlang River. Its mouth is at Ilana Bay. It forms two distributaries, the Cotabato and Tamontaka. The river is an important transport artery for the towns along its banks. Next is the third Agusan River. This river flows 217 miles along the Lampostala Valley, I mean Compostela Valley, and drains into Butuan Bay. The most illustrious feature of these rivers is, is the Agusan Marsh, which covers 19,997 hectares to reduce flush floods. It is a home of many endangered species of plants and animals and was declared as a wildlife sanctuary. So there are many freshwater captured fishes, uh, fish species in the lakes and rivers. So one of the example is the Laguna de Bay catfish, white gobby, serpent shrimp, white shrimp, etc. Fishing gear and the production. A fishing gear is the tool with which aquatic resources are captured, whereas the fishing method is how the gear is used. Gear also includes harvesting organisms when no particular gear or boat is involved. Furthermore, the same fishing gear can be used in different ways by different fishers. Fishing gear material. The introduction of synthetic fibers like nylon in place of natural fibers enhance the catch efficiency of gill nets used in inland waters like lakes and rivers. The fishing gear. Used in inland waters are gill nets, wall nets, cast nets, traps, lines, and drug nets. Drug nets and cast nets are mostly used in marginal areas of the rivers for the capture of weed fishes and minnows. First fishing gear, hook and lines. This is a common gear in our rivers and lakes. This is also mainly for predatory fishes. This gear initially was made of cotton twine and later replaced by nylon twine. Small fishes, earthworms, prawns, algae, etc. are used at as bait. Drop line. This gear is in, employed for the capture of scale and cat fishes. It consists of a main line and a number of hook of the same specifications attached to the end. The, the length of the line is either equal to or a little more than the depth of the fishing area. At the upper end of the line, a float is attached. Stick held drag net. It is generally 15 to 20 length and 2 to 3 depth. The mesh sizes range from 10 to 15 millimeter box. Sea net. Considerable variations are noted in the general size and mesh size of the net due to the area of operation and fish is caught. Gill nets. The nets. The gill nets are still the most widespread form of nets in inland waters like lakes and rivers and prove to be an effective and economical gear. It is used where fish is scattered in light density. There are more than that fishing gears used in lakes and rivers such as the cast nets, cover pots or plunge baskets, lantern net, deep net, vertical line net, frame net, push net, and fish pot. The fishing gear of this river system and lake system also show certain division along its entire course. In the upper reaches, where normally a swift current prevails cast net, stick heel drag net, cover pots, and trap are common. In the middle reaches, sea nets and gill nets are equally important. Cast nets, drag nets, or stick heel, left nets, and barriers are of secondary importance. Some of the gear like push net and small lift nets are common in all inland waters like lakes and rivers. In the production, a certain amount of the fish caught in river and lake system is consumed fresh by the fishermen themselves and by the community with a little limited radius of the fish landings but in the more important fisheries, a surplus to local requirements is produced which is sold for transport elsewhere. 
However, because of the dispersion and inaccess and accessibility of fishing sites in the lakes and rivers, the rapidity with which fish deteriorate under tropical conditions, most fish have be preserved by one means of another for it to arrive in the market in an acceptable cons condition. There are types of products in lakes and river and fisheries. Chilled fish, the preservation of fish by icing or freezing and a comparative innovation to the river fisheries. Dried fish, sand drying of fish without salting is not practical in many of the world's river system because of the high atmospheric humidity. Salting, preserving fish with salt is not common in inland water, largely because of the high cost of the salt and secondly because in the more humid areas of deliquis deliquisness of the salt shortens the life of the product rather than increasing it. Smoking. Smoke drying is perhaps the most widespread way of preserving fish in Africa and is practiced nearly all river systems and lakes. Fish oil. Several species of fish are particularly rich in fats and are traditionally used for extracting oil. Fermented products. Fermentation of the clean and glutted fish in water for 12 hours is a common preliminary salting. In Asia, a number of fermented products including fish paste, and sauce with a high salt content are also produced. The challenges or issues equals the major threats. So the lake and the river are used for both commercial and sport fishing, as well as for recreational activities such as boating and swimming. Freshwater fishes are the group of vertebrates that is the most threatened family. According to ICUCN or International Union for Conservation of Nature 2019, there are more than 6,000 species and the major threat of freshwater fishes and other freshwater biodiversity including the invasive species. The introduction of exotic or alien, it is caused a problem worldwide, including the destruction of habitat, introduction of disease and parasite, and competition with native species of fish. Next is the HMFD or the Habitat Modification, Fragmentation and Destruction, impacted the world's fishes biota in general, resulting in the extension of many freshwater species. Agricultural irrigation seems can cause a habitat salinization and the extinction of salt-tolerant species. Flood plains are critical for fish life cycle as they support the majority of river reproduction and eventually the fish sustainability. Next is overfishing. So our population growth is driving a greater need for protein sources and an alternative income. So freshwater fishes are often the most accessible resources and sustainable fishing poses a serious threat to fish and aquatic biodiversity and also to the livelihood of people in the river rain and the lake communities. Sustainable fishing practices and management based on local participation are urgently needed. Knowledge of the indigenous fish is important for raising awareness of the need of conservational and for practical management plans. Next is the environmental pollution. The outcome of pollution of freshwater weather as a result of industrial domestic or agricultural operations is always dangerous and can result in the elimination of fish species and they lake river, rivers and lakes. So next is the forestry practices. The effect of forestry practices on freshwater ecosystem and fishes, both afforestation and deforestation, it is a major source of concern. Each stage of the forestry cycle from the ground preparation, cosinophyte closure, the maturing crop, the filing, can have an impact on local freshwater. Next is, and lastly, is the climate change. Fish cannot control their body temperature, therefore, increasing or decreasing water temperature may have an impact on growth and reproduction, as well as the change of flow and chemistry. Characterized, characteristic imp impacted on fish include stunning, reduced number of offspring, and even a failure to reproduce at all. Some fish, such as salmon, catfish, and other, cannot swim under winter temperature. So it is very important to protect and to restore to secure the survival of many fascinating fishes of freshwater fishes. So let's move on with the different lakes and rivers in the Philippines. The Philippines has 412 <coughs> principal river basins and 119 proclaimed watersheds. Of this, 19 are considered major river basins. So next is the cleanest river, the Bungan River. It is located in the town of Pandan, Antique. 38 species in the river belong to 30 genera and 20 families. Family. So the longest and the largest river, the Rio Grande de Cagayan, it is a total length of approximately 505. It is located in the Cagayan Valley region. Popular species including large mount bass. The small, smallest river, the Tunasan Cuya River, begins in the Marinas Cavite and ends at the border of Montelupa and San Pedro Laguna. 
we have the most beautiful and deepest river, the Hinatuan Enchanted River. 80 feet deep and it is found between the boundaries of barangays of Talisay and Kambantong, a place where to preserve fish. Next is the Pasig River. It is a river in the Philippines that connects Laguna de Bay to Manila Bay. According to DNRERDB state that 8 species of fish are found in Pasig River. Next is the Agus River. Flows for 36.5 from Lanao Lake to Iligan Bay, Philippines. It generates 70% of the electricity used in Mindanao due to the hydroelectric plants in the river and the Maria Cristina Falls. So next, let's move on to the lake. There are over 100 recorded lakes in the Philippines. The region with the most number of lakes is Southern Tagalog, 22, followed by the Cordillera Altumus region. Within the South Tagalog region, the province of Laguna has the most number of lakes, which is 12. The five largest So first, we have Laguna de Bay, Lake Lanao, Taal Lake, Lake Mainit, and Nujan Lake. The first lake, which is the Lake Mainit, the fish can be found in the lakes are Pijanga, Bugna, Pantat, Kalisi, Tilapia, and Carpa. We have the smallest lake, the Jamboree Lake. It is a small recreational lake in Muntin, Lupa, Metro Manila. We have Kayungan Lake and Lake Apo that located in the Valencia province. Therefore, we concluded that learning the characteristic of the lakes and river in the Philippines would help us to understand its benefits and underlying disadvantages. By determining the flaws of the two kinds of bodies of water in the Philippines, it would be easy to address it and find plausible solution that is applicable for it to develop and high percentage of improvement. In order to have a healthier ecosystem for a variety of different species and more job opportunities, that is beneficial to our community and to our country.